Kobe Covington is another one where Dana White, how about if Usman wasn't here, Kobe would be the champion. And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I, I think Kobe sucks. I don't think that he's at as good as everybody thinks you he think is. He sucks. I think that compared to me, I think I'll be able to walk through him. I think that really? be, he's a lesser version of Sean Brady, I think. Because if you're looking at the guys he's fought, he's beaten Woodley coming off of two losses. He's beaten Masvidal coming off of two losses. Robbie Lawler coming off of two losses. He hasn't fought one of the guys that's in the top 10 right now. He's getting so much credit for losing close fights to Usman. Like, you're getting. You're a good loser? Is that what people are trying to say to him? I'm like, bro, why does he get all that credit for? Because he, him and Usman stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Neither one of them went for a takedown. Neither one of them tried to shoot at each other. They were just two wrestlers kickboxing. So because he made it a close kickboxing match with a wrestler, makes him that much of a, a monster, a pound for guy? I just don't think so. Really? Interesting. I'd like to see that fight. Yeah, but what, does he have a scheduled fight, Colby? He doesn't have anything doesn't. yet, but he's been missing. Like, well, I, he I got keep sucker asking, punched yeah. by Masvidal, and apparently he really got hurt from that. Yeah, I mean, you I know? think it's hurt for court. You think so? Yeah, because I'm like, I if, don't know. I know people who know him. Bad? He said he actually got hurt. Yeah, like he was fucked damage? up. He was fucked up for a while after that fight, apparently, or after that punch. Like you nerves or? Fight. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be talking out of my ass. Yeah. But my friend who knows him well said, dude, he got really fucked up from that punch because he didn't see it coming. Yeah. And Jorge just ran up to him and sucker punched him in the face. But when you're at that, when you're that person, like you have to have security with it. I'm like, all the trash talk you say, all the dumb stuff, all the people that want to kill you. I'm sure right. American Top Team, all the Brazilians, you talk trash about. Like you don't think that somebody sees you on the street is gonna hurt you. And that's what I feel like a lot of these guys need to start realizing is like you could say whatever you want to build a fight, but when you're talking about a guy's family, his kids, yeah, yeah. like he deserved it. I, I know that it was a sucker punch. It was dirty. I'm as what I was saying. Like, be a street fighter, go street fight him in the streets. Hit him with something, uh, but don't hit him and like run off. But I yeah. thought he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm never going to kick a man when he's down, but like, right. I always kick Kobe Covington when he's down. Like, I don't care about Kobe Covington. Like, That's hilarious. I've had hate for uh, Sean Strickland, and I've called him out before, and I was at the fight when he fought uh, Pereira, and Pereira like, knocked him out. Mm -hmm. And I, like, got, like, I got up to go to the bathroom, and I was like, brother, stop. Don't go anywhere. Don't say anything to him. I was like, bro, I'm just going to the bathroom. Like, I hate him, but I wouldn't like, laugh at somebody that they just got right. knocked out. Like, I wouldn't go up to, oh, you just got knocked out, LOL, or anything like that, because I know what it is to get knocked out in the cage. I know what it is to want it that bad and be that close to uh, achieving something, and you lose, fall flat on your face. So I would never talk trash about him. But if it was Kobe, I would probably laugh and point and everything at him. Like, I don't care about Kobe. <laughs> so he's your number one dude that you hate. Yeah, Kobe, yeah. Like, well, that's a real possibility for you. If he comes back. Like, people are, just don't know. I ask, when is he fighting? Oh, he's not fighting for a year. He's, gonna be, he's not going to be fighting for a while. And then I'm looking at it like. They say, why? I'm assuming because he's claiming brain damage with the, the court case. Mm. And I know, like, some lawyers, uh, like, injury lawyers, and he's like, yeah, when somebody comes in claiming brain damage, like, all I hear is cha-ching. Like, I know that I'm going to get paid for it because you could claim, like, future injuries or anything like that, like, mm. stuff that's going to happen in the future. So, and the, the court can't do anything like, well, we'll wait 10 years before you let you get paid or anything. And if you're suing Masvidal, who's worth millions of dollars, and you're claiming brain damage, and they see you take a fight, they're probably going to be like, right. how are you going to take a fight if you have brain damage? That's a good point. And that's really interesting, too. Is like, has there ever been a fighter that sued another fighter for a sucker punch? <laughs> has that ever happened? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think in the UFC it's ever happened before. And I feel like they should be, like, guy code. Like, right? I'm not going to call the cops or anything like that. Like, I'm not going to sue you off of that. And for especially for them, too, because they had a relationship before. Right. They so, were roommates. Yeah, you were roommates for that long. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and go to court and sue them like that? That's, to me, that's soft. Like, I'm not going to... If it's if it's if I'm Kobe, I'm gonna get revenge. If I'm Kobe, I'm gonna you already embarrassed me in the cage. I will hire somebody on the street to jump Masvidal, all right? Oh, like boy. do the same thing. So, but when you're getting to that level, it's like it's three guys. And I, like I'm not a guy that's gonna go to court or snitch or do anything like that. It's just I just don't like that mentality. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Because if he gets a million dollars out of the settlement, <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, million dollars for chip tooth. All right, it might. I don't know. I mean, if he really could prove brain damage. If he can prove that something really went wrong, I mean, we don't yeah. know. I mean, his career might be over. Who fucking knows? I don't yeah. know. I don't know what happened to him. You know, sometimes guys get hit and they're fucked up. Yeah. You know? Especially if you don't see it coming. And especially, like, we've seen it with guys that get knocked out and they've never been the same. Yes. From it. Yeah. And you're like, how the heck did this guy just change so much mm -hmm. off of that? And you're like, they took that much damage in a fight. You don't know which fight it's going to be. And that's why I tell guys, don't spar hard because you don't want to lose those years, lose those that toughness from your chin because mm -hmm. you can't. You can't gain muscles on your chin. Right. And I think Tony Ferguson was a big one of that. Like, after that Gaethje fight, he was never the same. And it's like a prime example of, like, bro, people get hurt and something changes in their, their body was, or mind or something. That was a beating, man. That was a beating, that Gaethje fight. Oof. That was a beating. And Tony caught him. Caught him with a big uppercut early in the fight, remember? Oh, yeah. He had him yeah. rocked. Yeah, he had him. He just decided edge. to stand and trade. And Gaethje, instead of loading up, he started Trevor Whitman in the corner, told him, like, settle down. Don't fucking try to take his head off with every shot. Pick your shots, be technical, and then he started tuning them up. And when he started tuning them up, at the end of it, it was like it was bad. 
And when I believe it was Herb Dean, when Herb Dean stopped it, I was like, "Ooh, good stoppage," because this is not this is ugly. Yeah. I mean, he was like moving away, funny. I was like, he's he got too many shots. Some man. guys are just too tough for their own mm -hmm. good. And that's Tony. He's so tough. Yeah. That motherfucker is so tough. But and you think back to those, like how you said he almost dropped him at the end of the first, and you're mm -hmm. looking back at um, Pereira and Adesanya where he almost yes. dropped him at the beginning of the first. You're like, how many of those fights are there where it's like right. one more second, mm -hmm. this guy would have won, and the whole thing would have changed. Yeah. If Izzy caught him with that punch two minutes to go instead of two <sighs> seconds to go, who fucking knows, man? He couldn't have stopped him in the first round. Yeah, that yeah. was right to end it. Changes yeah. everything in well, the whole division. You know, Izzy almost stopped him in the second kickboxing fight they had, too. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, the second kickboxing fight. Because in the second kickboxing fight, the first one, I thought Izzy should have won a decision. It was very close, but I thought Izzy should have won. And the second one, Izzy had him rocked. Like, he had him wobbling, and then they came in and gave him a standing eight count. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that, that like... And I, I felt like he should have let him drop first before giving him the standing eight count. Like, standing eight counts are weird. Yeah. They're so weird. It's like, you're in trouble, I'm going to give you a break. Versus, you're in trouble, and then the guy stops you. Like, yeah. Why... I don't agree with standing eight counts. I don't understand it. But it's, it's like I think the I think MMA rules are, are superior in that like there's no like you get dropped and you come back up because of the fact that there's ground fighting and ground and pound. When someone gets hurt and the, uh, someone can put that person away, that's the end of the fight. There's a thing that happens in boxing when a guy gets dropped where you're like one, two, and you get up and then no one's hitting you. And they brush your gloves off and they go come to me and there's all this time and you have time to sort of get your equilibrium back and move around, that's probably worse for you. Yeah. It's probably worse for you.